Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Faster Masters Rowing Radio, where having a rowing coach only makes you better. Following a program gives you a true pathway to becoming a confident rower who's respected by your peers. You can become the athlete you want to row with. I'm Rebecca Caro, and I'm joined by Marlene Royal. Hello, Rebecca, and hello to our Faster Masters Rowing Radio audience. It's fabulous to be here with everybody today. Now, if you're watching on the live stream, you can add comments and remarks and questions by typing into the chat that's below the stream. And if you wanted to just hit the share button now and tell a few other folks that you're watching with us live, that would be great. It will help us bring in new listeners. Now, a message from our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by Burnham. They sell boat covers, boat slings and rigger bags, everything you need to protect your boat when it's off the water. Check out their website, burnhamboatslings.com. Now, the podcast is supported with deep gratitude from Marlene and myself by a wonderful cohort of people. They support us with donations from $1 a month. And if you listen today and you think, I heard something really useful and you would like to contribute to the costs that we have for running the podcast, which, by the way, run to around $100 a month, go to fastermastersrowing.com forward slash podcast and you can make a subscription donation there. Moving on to... Hello from some of our live listeners. Good, good to see friendly, friendly faces who, who we know. This past week, which is the part in the show where we talk about the work that we're doing to advocate more broadly for Masters Rowing. Marlene, do you want to kick off? Sure. This week we did our ERG Racing webinar and um, that was, you know, we had, we had a very good audience and some excellent speakers who were uh, Jordan and Megan Falcone and Pat Hamner and um, Graham Benton. And we were, you know, we had a terrific discussion how to approach erg racing from the mental point of view, um, from the training point of view that you've got to get the training in, great strategies for warming up. Um, there were some, some really cool tips that our um, guests offered for us, you know, about warming up, how to how to develop your race plan? How to stay on it? So um, so that that was a lot of fun that we did earlier in the week. Yeah, and the thing that gets me is yes, I have done a few erg races in my time, but these guys have insights and tips that I didn't know. I was learning stuff when I was watching the webinar. Yeah, absolutely, and you know because you know every little tool that you can put in your toolkit is good, and you know, and you know. They just they all had very good tips that were also new to me, you know, because, you know, you're used to doing things the way you do it. And it and that's why it's so nice to hear, like, how do other people approach this? How do they get through that third 500? Right. What do they do? What's their strategy? Exactly. Now, if you're interested in the Erg Racing webinar, uh, just Google Faster Masters Rowing Erg Racing webinar. The price is $19. It's been recorded. It will stay at $19 through to the end of February, and then the price will be going up. So if you want it, it's there. It is part of our permanent rowing library. So if you buy it, you get it forever. You can log in at any time and you can watch it again. You can download all of the extra resources because there's a whole seven, I think, extra lessons of other material um, which are books that will help you with rowing on an erg. There is an interview with Graham Benton. There is your uh, pre-race checklist for erg racing. There's warm-up, a really detailed warm-up from Jordan Falcone, uh, which is just brilliant, and a couple more things besides. So we kind of see this as building your own rowing library, and um, I think it's good value. I have no doubt that everybody who attended live had fantastic questions and we got really great answers as well, obviously, from our panelists. Uh, but that's going to be there for you forever. So even though you don't maybe erg race through the whole year, 
it's a really good thing to come back to for a refresher. Now, my past week has been focused in here in New Zealand on the date of our Masters Rowing Championships. So uh, obviously, being Southern Hemisphere, our winter is basically from May through to September. And our national championships for Masters is in September, which is plum at the end of winter. It really is not springtime yet then. And there's a very strict rotation of one year the event is in the North Island and one year it's in the South Island, which works extremely well. And the way it works at the moment is there's a the Legion Regatta, which is in April or May, which is kind of the North Island Championships. Then the South Island have their Masters Championships in June, and which is plum in the middle of winter, I should say. Um, and then we have the National Masters Championships in September. But last year, because of the uh, pandemic, the championships were postponed to the end of October and they were in the South Island. And a lot of people remarked on how the weather was better and the water conditions were just that little bit better. And it just made it for a nicer racing event, which has prompted me to raise the opportunity of having a discussion about should we change the date permanently away from September? And there are two choices. One is May and the other is October. And this will be a long term planning thing. It won't change this year in likelihood. If it changes, it will change in 2023. And so every club in the country has been asked to put their views to their local provincial rowing association because these are the organisations that vote at the Rowing New Zealand AGM. No one else can vote. So if you're in Otago, if you're in Southland, wherever you are, if you're in the Hawks Bay, Bay of Plenty, you've got to make sure that your views are represented by the people who are in that organisation. And it won't happen unless it passes at the Rowing New Zealand AGM, which is in April. So labouring the point there, if you have an interest in this, please make sure that your club secretary has put the views of the masters in your club forward as to whether we should change it and to which of those alternative dates. Now, big topic for the week. Oh, before I do that, let me just show you. This is Jao de Silva, and he was rowing in Gondomar in Portugal and sent this wonderful GoPro camera photograph of him right at the catch. Um, and looking out to the horizon, which I really enjoy, but look at that relaxed grip on his right hand, thumb just resting on the end of the uh, the oar handle. Really, really nice uh, pose. Plus, if you look behind him, that water is glassy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Such a good picture. <laughs> Dynamic warm-ups are our big topic for today. Um, and this is thanks to Elaine, who asked the question, um, you know, should we do them? What are they? What are the benefits of a dynamic warm up? Um, and by this, we mean a land based warm up before you get on the water. So Marlene's been doing all the hard work this week and she's <laughs> going to lead you through this. Yes. Well, well, as I said, talking about, you know, what is a dynamic warm up when when you're warming up? This, this can be before strength session. This can also be before you go on water. It is really important to spend 10 or 15 minutes you don't need a long time for this but spend 10 or 15 minutes getting your joints moving and getting your circulation going I mean the the point is to um, wake up your joints wake up your circulation raise your body temperature a little bit um, it's not about real static type of stretching or working on flexibility at this point it's really mobility and like prepping your body to, to work. Um, so I'm going to click over and show you some of the exercises that you can go quite, you know, quite simply. And as I said, you can use this before rowing, you can use this before strength, but you always want to start out with some kind of light cardio. So in this case, I put a spinning bike there. Um, you could easily get on the, the rowing machine and row for five minutes, you could jog for five minutes. Um, if you have a treadmill or something indoors, 
any anything aerobic that you can do for about five minutes. You know, this is just going to kind of wake your body up and and start to say, okay, you know, I'm getting primed to to do my workout. Start from the ankles and work up your body. Okay, so the first thing is, you know, start with some simple ankle flexibilities. And again, thinking about being in the boat, you want your ankles to be warmed up. Um, this is a simple, a simple stretch that you can do it with using the stick or, or without the stick. But, you know, you want your, your one, one foot forward kneeling on one, one knee and you want to drive the ankle that you're, that you're uh, warming up, you know, to get that joint mobility going. You just want to drive your knee forward and keep your whole foot down on the floor, you know. So, so you really want to focus on flexing right at, at the ankle joint. And again, you're just doing one set of 10 reps. You know, this isn't, isn't a really lengthy so Marlene, process. Marlene, remember we have audio listeners, so you need to describe that. And it's a dorsiflexion stretch. Yes. So it's called a dorsiflexion stretch. And you kneel, you're, you're kneeling down on one knee and you have your opposite foot forward with your foot on the floor, the, the ankle that you're stretching. And you can push your knee for, you know, sort of lean into it so that you're flexing at the ankle and then rock back on the knee on the ground and then rock forward. So you have one foot, like almost like you're doing a, a half kneeling type of a position. The, the next thing is our leg swings. And this is, these are really important warm ups for your hip joint. Um, so you want to do your, your leg swings in two directions. So the first direction is forward, forward, and back. So again, just 10 reps on each leg. It's not very lengthy, but you know, put your hand against a wall or hold on a railing. And with one leg, just really focus on swinging your leg, the whole leg forward and then back and forward and back. You know, keep your glutes engaged, but really focus on good motion at the hip to get that hip joint warmed up and and then turn and face the wall and you want to do a lateral leg swing so if you're facing the wall then you want to swing your leg across your midline and then out to the side and then across the midline and then out to the side so that you're you're getting some side to side motion there and again the importance of this is to is to warm up that hip joint get, you know, get some fluid motion, get some circulation in there. And then drop down onto all fours on the floor. And if you're down on all fours, you want to do a, a hip extension. And what you want to do is actually bend one leg and drive your heel up towards the ceiling. So if you're, if you're kneeling down, um, you're going to start on all fours with your hands under your shoulders and your knees and keep the knee of your exercising leg bent and then push the heel up towards the ceiling and then you come back down so this this activates your glutes again gets those muscles warmed up and you do 10 on each leg then you stay down on all fours here and and this is um a hip abduction when you're moving your hip away from the center line of your body it's also known as the fire hydrant exercise so back down on all fours you're lifting you lift one leg out to the side and then back down and then out to the side and then back down and um, again it's another side to side motion it's fo focusing on the hip joint here to get to get the hip joint warmed up obviously if you're in the boathouse you need a mat or a towel or something that you can lie down on if you if you don't have a, a a big gym area or something, but um, your next exercise is, a, is what we call a glute bridge. And so many people will probably be pretty familiar with this. You want to activate your glutes. So you lie down on the, on the back with your knees bent, contract your butt muscles, and then you want to lift your hips off the ground until your, your trunk is in line with your legs and then drop your hips back down to the floor and then repeat and lift up again. So it's a bridging motion. It's really targeting your glutes and activating your glute muscles. Again, just 10 reps with that. this. Then roll over into a plank. And you know, your, your bracing motion with the plank 
you're just activating your you're activating your core you're activating your your extensors in your back and stabilizing your shoulder you know you want to remind your body before you start your exercises of what stability feels like and so stability is going to be holding the shoulder joint really steady holding the hips really steady keeping the spine um, and hips all in one straight line and just hold that for 30 seconds again this is just a warm-up so you don't have to do this a lot but you're just telling your muscle okay we're activating, we're getting primed to, to do some work, whether it's in the boat or in the gym. Then you can stand up and, and grab an elastic, an elastic band. Um, if you don't have an elastic band, you can just do this motion with your arms, but you want to hold your hands out in front of you. And if you have a rubber band, then you want to separate your hands and then bring them back together. So you want to do a band pull apart. And this is going to this is going to really activate your bit mid back muscles, like the muscles between your shoulder blades. And, you know, this is exactly, you know, you're going to feel these muscles when you're, when you're approaching the release of the stroke, or if you're at the finish of the leg drive, you know, it's one of the places that you're going to feel this mid back activation. If you don't have an elastic, just do it without the elastic, you know, that, that just swing your arms out to the side and then bring them back again. But you really want to you really want to focus on what you're feeling between your shoulder blades um, when when your hands are all the way apart, kind of squeezing the shoulder blades together, then bringing your hands back together again. We have two more, and again, this should only take ten to fifteen minutes because you're only doing ten reps in one set. Do some push-ups. Um, push-ups with a little bit of protraction is really good to activate your serratus anterior. And that's that's one of the muscles um, in your, they call it the boxer's muscles, but that is one of the muscles that you want to activate, um, which really helps to prevent rib stress injuries and, you know, sort of get that serratus activated before you start rowing. So in this sense, you can do a push-up, you know, a regular push-up on the floor. And when you push up, just extend a little bit more. So we call that protraction when you, you you kind of stretch up through your shoulder blades a little bit as you push up and and then and then you drop back down into a regular push up position and then down to the floor. Now this can be this can be kind of a challenging exercise if you're not used to doing full push ups. So you can do this modified. You can do it against a wall and just push up and then extend a little bit more through the shoulders. And it's almost like you're trying to stretch a little bit there, but apply pressure to the wall. Um, or you could do it, for example, elevating your hand. So you could do it against a staircase or you could do it against a, a, a bar. Um, like if there's a squat rack and you put the bar at waist high, you can you can do the push-ups against the bar. You can do it something like that to, to make it easier. But you really want to do a push-up and then a little bit extra there to engage that serratus anterior. The, the final exercise is to activate your lower body. And this is a squat and shoulder flexion. So if you have it, it's really good to have a, a, a stick or something that you can hold if possible, because it, it does kind of help give you some cues. But you want to squat down and at the same time, lift your hands up above your head so that you're, you're getting pinned. And as you squat down, you raise the stick up over your head at the same time and then lower the stick as you squat up because this will help keep your spine in neutral. And you also want to keep your heels down on the ground. So you want to get down and squat up and down and activate those hips and glutes. And this also, you know, does a little bit for your shoulders, but um, putting the hands up over the head helps keep your spine in neutral. And that's really what you're you're looking here to just get that lower body activation going. And, you know, as I said, 10 reps of each exercise, you can do this in 15 minutes um, before you get in the boat or um, before you start your, your workout in the gym. Fantastic. Now, for those of us who are watching on video, you will have seen a lot of those diagrams that Marlene talked us through. If you weren't watching and you're listening later on, we will circulate the warm-up routine and a link to download that document on our newsletter. 
So get onto the Faster Masters newsletter, just Google it, you'll find a page and we will ensure to put the link in so you can go and download that for yourself. Now, when you're um, coming to the boathouse, a lot of us arrive by car. So we roll out of bed and get dressed and we're straight into the car. Marlene, do you have any tips as to how we can sort of overcome that sitting tension? that you get when you've been, you know, seated in your car uh, really early in the morning. Um, it's not just about doing this routine, but when you're in a rush, what should we be doing? Well, if you didn't have time to do your full warm up and you're just hopping out of the car, honestly, what I would, the, the main thing that I would do, I would do the leg swings. You know, I, I think if I were going to pick the, the first thing is I would do the leg swings for and back, forward and back, and then side to side, because that's going to warm up your hips, which is really important for getting for getting into the boat. Um, the probably the next thing I would prioritize, say, if you could do two things, I would do the, the squats with the overhead, mm -hmm. overhead hands. And, you know, and just do do 10, 10 squats and raising the stick up over your hand at the same time. And, you know, so you're warming up the, the lower body. And, you know, if I were going to do the third thing, I would do something a little bit like for the glutes. But if you only had like literally three minutes while somebody's giving you instructions, you can be doing your leg swings and listening at the same time. And you can be doing your squats and listening at the same time. So. Um, you know, I think getting those hips moving and, you know, a little bit of warming up in the lower back and knees, you know, because doing your squat, you'll, you'll, you'll address the ankles and the knees and the hips and the shoulders because you're going up overhead. So if I were going to do two, like super mini, that's what I would pick. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much. I'm, of course, now feeling super guilty because I stood there listening for instructions this morning, watching some of my crewmates doing exactly those leg swings. <laughs> Next time I will be, I will sharpen up. I will, I will, I will be better at, at this in, in the future. Well, you know, the leg swings you can do actually as with, as a partner too. If you have a, a partner there, you can, you know, each, you can each, you know, hang up, put your arm around the other person's shoulders and you can, you can do your leg swings and then stop. And, you know, skiers, cross country skiers do a lot of stuff like that too. Like, because they're outside and they've got to do leg swings and different, different stretches. They do them like, like partner stretches. Well, that's really, really good to know. Well, thank you, Molly. That was great. I, I'm now feeling like A, guilty and B, motivated to go and get on to do a uh, dynamic dynamic warm-up um, for me and for my crew for the next time that we go out. This has been Faster Masters Rowing Radio, the show dedicated to Masters athletes who want fun, fitness and confidence in their rowing. You can become a student of the sport by buying a Faster Masters Rowing program subscription today. Go to fastermastersrowing.com forward slash join and we look forward to seeing you all at the same time next week. Till then, bye-bye.